Okay. Well, I would, um, I'm Rachel Osira, District Rotary Foundation Chair, uh, here tonight with um, past District Governor and Chair of our District Grants Subcommittee, um, Pedro Savalas. We'd like to welcome you to our, our webinar tonight on connecting for global grants. I just want to remind everybody that we are recording this session and it will be available um, posted on to the website uh, and uh, we'll, we'll also send it out um, by email to our participants and, and other our grant teams and others who, who may be interested in that. Um, like to ask you if you could put your your name and your club and your email address into the chat and if you have any questions um, please either put those into the chat or put those into the Q&A and Pedro I'd like to ask if you could um, monitor the chat and the q and oh, well. it's hard for me to to see those when I'm screen sharing and just mm -hmm. yes just jump jump right in with the that. there's no there's just uh, Roger saying that. hi Okay. Okay. Great. Well, good. Well, tonight we're going to, we're going to um, spend some time on connecting for, for global grants. The question has, has come up a number of times since this rotary year, we've allocated global grant district designated funds to all of the clubs that donated to the annual fund three years ago. Well, you know, how do they connect or, you know, how, how do we find partners or projects? Um, and this is always a, a good topic, no matter the circumstance that we do want to spend a, a little more time um, talking about that tonight. So again, um, without going into a lot of detail, what are global grants? We're, well, we're talking about our big um, long-term sustainable projects in minimum of $30,000 budget there's always a partnership, a global partnership between a host club and an international partner. Um, and they align with our areas of focus, our six areas of focus, um, soon to be seven. So that's the types of projects that we're talking about. And uh, again, these, you know, these projects can occur um, anywhere in the world. And since um, 2013, when the program began, uh, by now, um, we've done over 50 uh, global grants that have been submitted, approved, or completed, almost $4 million in total funding, with the about 65% of those funds coming from the Rotary Foundation. So those, those are the, the projects that we're talking about. And you, as you can see there, um, and we've been active all over the world, and we've been active in all areas of focus. And we've had about... I believe, um, I'm trying to remember how many, at least 20 of our clubs are currently um, have active or open um, global grants right now, which is um, quite remarkable. So it's about a third of our clubs. And when you say uh, uh, active, that, that means that we are either the principal, I mean, the, uh, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're um, one of the sponsor clubs. Yeah, we're a sponsor club. So we have even many more clubs that are um, contributing as, as funders to the projects or collaborators, but we have, a, I believe, about 20 of our clubs right now that are either the, the international host or the, um, um, I'm the international sponsor or the host sponsor. So they're actively engaged in doing the project, which is, which is terrific. Um, and then many more who are, are, who are also donating and are involved. So we just wanna make sure that you know, you know how to connect or find out what's going on. Um, and just a reminder of what the funding policy is for uh, the Rotary Foundation for, for global grants. Um, the grant sponsors can use a combination of district designated funds or, or cash um, uh, for, for the, the projects, $30,000 is the minimum budget. The World Fund will match the district designated funds 100%, but as of July 1st this year, there's no match for the cash. But there's also no minimum um, Rotary Foundation match. There used to be a $15,000 minimum, but that's no longer the case. 
and the international sponsor has to put in at least 15% of the total sponsor funding unless it's a, a COVID-19 project. Those are just some of the, the parameters that we want to make sure that you have in mind. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, because of those uh, changes, uh, and also because we had a number of, of um, we had an opportunity on July 1st for clubs to submit grant applications using the old matching rules from last year with um, district designated funds that became available July 1st this year. There were a lot of projects that came through on July 1st um, around the world, uh, about a thousand um, global grant applications were submitted to the Rotary Foundation on July 1st, as compared to about 13 or 1400 that were approved all of last year. So um, as a result, we had a, a number of projects in our district that came forward on July 1st as well. So what that did is it reduced the remaining available district designated funds that we had for the, this year to about $17,000, which were allocated um, to all the clubs who had contributed three years ago based on what they gave, what, what percent of the total um, that, that those clubs donated. So um, the clubs uh, have you know, tagged um, uh, global grant allocations and we just wanna make sure that you know, everybody knows how to, to try to connect and, and to use those, those funds. So we just wanna remind really quickly what the global grant financing looks like this year. It's, it's different than in the past. So these are three different ways to get to the uh, minimum $30,000 uh, global grant budget. It could be $10,000 a DDF plus, which is automatically matched by the World Fund. And then you'd have to put in another $10,000 of, of cash. If you have $5,000 a DDF, it would be automatically matched by the World Fund and you'd have to put in another $20,000 of cash. Or you don't even have to put any DDF at all. You could just put in all cash. I, I don't know that anyone would do that, but um, but just, just shows mathematically what the possibilities are. So the partnerships are, are, are really important um, in terms of putting the cash together, but we have so many clubs now that have DDF allocations that we want to make sure that you, know, you have the opportunity to, um, to partner up. And posted on our website um, is a, a document that shows what each club has been allocated this year, it's on, on the district website. It was um, sent out to all the club presidents and um, it's, on, it's on the grants page and Pedro and his committee keep track of this. So as you know, clubs um, notify us that they wanna use their district designated funds allocation for a particular project, um, you know, we keep track of that. And we just need the club president to let us know that, that's, um, that they're authorizing it and, and we will um, move forward. We also have some clubs that chose to use their district grant monies for global grant DDF instead of district grants. So these clubs also have um, these additional funds available as district designated funds for, for grants of their choosing. We just want to be transparent about that. So we, um, if there's any questions on that, we can um, pause and answer the questions on, on, on what the situation is before we move into finding mm -hmm. partners. No questions so far. Okay, good. Well, it's, it's uh, yeah, so how do we find partners? Well, there's so many different um, ways to find partners. And, and Pedro, I know you love um, talking about that. You have done an amazing job of bringing more partnerships um, in, uh, you know, in, into the district and, um, you know, building up those relationships. Yes, I, I, I have, you go, go ahead. No, I, I think that uh, one of the things that we, that, that, that we have done with success is to reach out to the, to the partners where we have been a significant uh, uh, international contributor, significant international, where we have given significant contributions and ask them for a little bit of reciprocity. And uh, I think that, that that worked very well uh, in order to fund some of the, some of the um, global grants that we did locally. 
And um, so keeping those relations and also uh, the, uh, attending some of the, some of the, uh, we probably have some of these things listed here, you know, some of the uh, project fairs that are, that are held in some of the countries and uh, attending the, uh, the Rotary Convention, you know, attending some of the Sun events and uh, all, those, all, those, all those things create that, uh, that personal relation with relationship with other with other Rotarians from other countries and other districts, and uh, then then we just had to take the leap of faith and we had to send them an email or or or, or, or call them and, and say, hey, you know, I, we have this project, uh, help us. So if we don't ask, they, 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 we will never get it. So doing doing that ask is uh, is very important. Is um, it's no different that you are trying to raise money for an organization in the U.S. You know, you have to, you have to call, and there is a lot of personal relations involved with that. And, and, and so, so that's my recommendation: is just to keep those relationships going, and uh, always remember that it's a two-way street. That we contribute to projects overseas, but then we can ask them to help us for projects locally. Right. Right. Um. Did you want to comment on any of these um, specific items? Well, we—I uh, I mentioned about the project first. We, yeah, uh, yeah we uh, we have attended. Actually, I took a group from Rotary One once to a project fair in Ecuador, and uh, out of that, uh, there were several projects that we did there, and then we were able to call them and they helped us fund some of the some of the uh, local global grants that we are doing here. And um, um, the uh, Rotary Showcase, I think, is also very important. In fact, that we should continue to write about our projects and publish it there. And yeah, and I've, I've actually got a live link here. So I'm going to try to, to go to Rotary Showcase. Uh, hopefully, the, the link will go through here. And we can take a look at it. This, this is on myrotary.org. Um, can you see it, Pedro? Um, no. Oh, you can't. What What do you see right now? Uh, I just just the same thing, the same slide. The same slide. It didn't change. Yeah. Change the color of that. Uh, All right. Let maybe you have... need to do it on your, on your computer and then share it. Yep. There we go. Now, now is it there? Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. I, I see it automatically, so I, I, I appreciate that. Um, so here's the Rotary Showcase. It's on myrotary.org, and they've really enhanced this tool. You can go ahead and you know, put in um, keywords, what you're searching for, um, global grants that are proposed or in progress or proposed and seeking partners, um, locations, just you know, in any country in the world. Um, districts, you can, you can look for districts, you can, um, uh, you, you, you can look at COVID-19, here's the Global Grant Seeking Partners, and if I click on this, it would list all the, all the projects that are looking for partners that are entered into Rotary Showcase, they're organized by areas of focus, again, I could click and, um, you know, you would you would see those. I, I did click, but I'm a, okay. Um, it's it's a great place to go and look um, if if you're looking for if you have a an allocation of district designated funds and you're you know you're looking at something that you're you want to be inspired by. Um, if if you have a global grant project and you're looking for partners. I would encourage um, going into Rotary Showcase and putting your project out there. You know, more and more clubs and districts around the world are using this this tool. So um, that was just a really quick look at it, but it's a it's a it's a really great resource. Um, I'm going to stop sharing that and go back to the slide. I think, or, or my back. Is, do we have the slides back? Yes, the slides okay, back. Great, great. Um, 
also I, a couple others I want to highlight are the Rotary Action Groups. There, there's many different Rotary Action Groups uh, around water and sanitation. Um, uh, there's um, each area focus has a number of different action groups, um, diabetes prevention, just a, a, a lot of different things. And, and that's another good place to, to look for partners, either for your project or a project that you wanna participate in. And these groups are also listed in myrotary.org. Um, I am probably gonna have to stop sharing and then go and pick it up in my browser. Are you able to see the Rotary yes. groups? Okay, yes, so yes. yeah, in myrotary.org, um, you can uh, find Rotary Action Groups. It's under uh, Take Action um, or Exchange Ideas. I think it's under Exchange Ideas, Rotary Action Groups. Um, and then they're all listed here. And um, you'll see they're organized by areas of focus promoting peace. Um, I'm a me member of this group here, the Slavery Prevention Group. It's, it's about fighting human trafficking. Um, many on fighting disease, um, clean water and sanitation. That's the original Rotary Action Group. Uh, saving mothers and children, supporting education, growing local economies, supporting the environment and um, action groups that work in more than one area of focus. So uh, some of them, most of them have a small annual fee, you know, to join and become a member, but it's a great place for enrichment. And these are, these are member driven. Um, they're, they're, they're not uh, part, part of, uh, they're, they're, they're not staff driven. These are strictly um, Rotary member driven. So another, another great area to look to, um, to, to look for projects and, and make uh, all kinds of connections. So I'm gonna come back again to the, am I back in the presentation? You are, you are in the presentation, yes. Okay. And we'll, we'll um, come over to project fairs in just a moment. Um, there, there's also Rotary discussion groups. You can go into myrotary.org and there's a place um, I think it's under take action where you can join a discussion group on, on many different topics. And I, I would I have to be logged in to, to access it. So I'm not, I'm not gonna click on that particular link. Um, but it, it, again, that, that's an, another great area. And there's a lot of chats that go back and forth. So it's more of a, um, you know, a, a chat area, there's emails that come out depending on the group. So another great source. There's also the matchinggrants.org website, which we use for administering our district grants, but it has a global grant side to it that um, clubs can go in and put information about a global grant that they're trying to put together and they look for funders. So I am going to try to click on that link and show what that looks like. So here's the, oops, I guess I have to stop screen sharing. And go over to the website. Are you able to see the matchinggrants.org website? Yes, yes. Okay. So here's the, the landing page. And we, most of our work is all over on the district grant side, but if you go into global grants, um, these are all of the projects that are currently listed in matchinggrants.org. And they're, they're looking for partners, they're looking for funders. So if we just clicked on this one here, um, artificial limbs in India, um, you can see they have information about the, you know, the project that they're putting together, what the total budget is, um, how much funding they're looking for. They're looking for $32,000. Uh, there might be information on, you know, so you can see more information on these, these tabs. And there's a way for clubs who are interested in funding to um, respond, you know, through, through this website. And also if you, you have a project that you wanna find funding for, you, you can also do this as well. And it, Showcase now is 
has picked up this capability and Rotary Showcase is, is um, uh, doing something similar, but it's not really extra work to, to use both platforms and it would allow you to, to reach um, more people and, and have a better chance of success. So that's again, another tool, a great tool for finding projects and uh, finding funders. Okay. So okay. um, back. Back, back to you, you want to talk about any of these, whoops. Um, didn't no, no, I just I was saying we're just back into the presentation. Right? Yes, we are. Um, so yeah, we're back into the presentation. Um, we've got a couple of um, talking about project fairs here. Uh, these are photos, I think, from some of the project fairs that um, perhaps you were at. Pedro? Yes, uh, yeah, the, um, one is those in Mexico, the other is in Ecuador. Okay. Uh, the other one looks in, it's in Africa, but that wasn't in that one. Yeah. That was, um, yeah, I think that was at the House of, um, that might have been at the House of Friendship yes, at yes. one of the conventions, but that's the Western Africa um, uh, project fair that, that's mm -hmm. held. And, and I want to, uh, several of these were just recently held. And in fact, I think some of the people on the webinar tonight may, may have attended, um, they were virtually held. The World Project Fair was um, held at late October, early November. Um, and I think the link, the, the, the link uh, that's in this, in this um, slide pack, which we'll make available is still active and you can still go in and you can, you can look at the projects, the information is, is still there. Uh, for for those who are interested um, in it, and just this last weekend was the um, the Ecuador the online project fair. Pedro, did you participate in this one? No, I, I couldn't participate this year. So it was, but uh, yeah, those are uh, uh, the pictures from Ecuador, and uh, and uh, when we uh, when we went uh, like four years ago now. We actually went a trip to the Galapagos Islands also with the with the whole team, and so that and that's what you you, you would uh, see the turtle over there, you know the big the big, and uh, the mountain is uh, that's uh, one of the iconic mountains in Ecuador. Is the is the tallest active volcano in the world? It's called Cotopaxi. Ah, yes. And, yeah, it's close. To, it's close to twenty four thousand feet high, but it is an active volcano. So. You can, you can see the smoke coming off from the, from the top. Yeah. And then the, the, the Panama hats are made in Ecuador. So, and you go to the jungle, then you see the parakeet over there. So, huh. I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, it is uh, actually the, the project fair in Ecuador is the, is the, um, the oldest. Okay. It's been running every year for 15 years, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is the 15th one and they, and they did it online. Now I went in on this link and I'll um, try to let's get my cursor on it. I'll try to go in on the link. I'll probably have to stop sharing and um, reshare. <laughs> Here we go. Oops. So are you able to see the website now? Uh, we see it says welcome, yeah. Okay, so this is the, the website for the fair. And I, I believe you can still um, get into the project. So they're organized by area focus. Um, and they're organized by club, they're organized by area focus. There's an overall presentation that's available um, as well. Uh, here, here's the, the link to the um, the overall presentation. And uh, these are the, the different, um, this, this must be the, yeah, the different clubs. So you can visit a club or you can visit an area of focus and get more information. So um, let's just visit this club here. And so there's, there's information um, about their project, the project summary, a PowerPoint presentation, um, a, a WhatsApp uh, connection, uh, email connection. So this information, I th think, uh, will be here for a, a number of weeks to come. And so even though 
if you're not able to go to the you haven't gone to the project fair you know the information is is still there and it's accessible which is which is really a, a great feature of doing it virtually i'm going to stop sharing that and come back to the powerpoint there and then i also um want to highlight that the uh west africa um, also had a virtual project fair last week as, as well. And similarly, I um, there, there's a link for that. And they've got um, their information um, available too. Let's see if I get there. So this is the, the actual website for the West Africa Project Fair. Uh, and um, there's a registration and you can go into the exhibit hall and um, see, see the projects and get information about the organizers. So these are three um, project fairs that were held recently. The information is still online and, and I, I suspect there are, there are more as well, but these are um, three of the really big ones. So let's go back to, to PowerPoint. I, th I think I'm back in PowerPoint. <laughs> yes, you are. Okay. Um, let's uh, see here. Let's just go back um, to this slide here and see if there's anything else we want to emphasize. Um, you know, just um, talking with with other clubs in the district, um, in in nearby districts, um, visiting the district grant subcommittee. You know, we have um, monthly meetings of the district that or the, the committee that Pedro shares chairs, and mm -hmm. anyone is welcome um, to attend. the The information is online on the district calendar, and you'll you'll hear about. Um, projects that are being reviewed or opportunities to, to get involved as well. One project that was very interesting, uh, Rachel, is the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the smaller schools project that was like a, like a, um, it was there just for a couple of years, but uh, what, we, what I thought that was interesting in, in that project is that uh, one of our Rotarians from Naperville, Chuck Newman, uh, I, I, I actually, reach it out to many clubs and many, not, not only in our district, but also in other districts. Mm -hmm. And help them put, put together the proposals through these schools. And I think, I think that's a very good example of, uh, of how, to, how to reach out to other clubs. You know, what you have an, a, a specific idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was very successful in, uh, in getting three or four clubs in our district to, to become the uh, international sponsors mm -hmm. for these schools in, uh, in, in, South, in, Central, in Central America mainly. And he was also able to get some districts in uh, Michigan to, to sponsor projects. Yeah, so yeah. That was, I think that, that's a pretty good example, very successful because we went up doing like a seven or eight schools uh, out, of, out of that effort. You know? Yeah, so seven schools in Honduras, um, I think, Four, four uh, at least four, five, five different Rotary clubs um, here um, sponsoring, and many more contributing as as collaborators and and as donors to that. So, you know, I would encourage any clubs who are putting global grants together uh, right now to really reach out broadly inside of our district. Um, we, I mean, we have a rule anyway that you have to have at least two or three collaborating clubs um, anyway, but it's a, it's a great opportunity with the district designated funds that have been allocated to get even more clubs, you know, engaged in your projects and, and excited about that. I know the Rotary Club of Chicago recently put together this, um, the project in Bolivia with Solidarity Bridge for the um, on the neurosurgery and reached out to um, many clubs in the district. In fact, I, they submitted that project, I think it was yesterday, they mm -hmm. submitted it and I had to authorize it. And 
the number of clubs and districts on that project, um, the number of clubs in our district, but also elsewhere in the world and the number of districts was, was quite amazing. And it was just in, in, you know, a great example of, of really reaching out. Another one I think that we, we want to point out is the, the project that we did locally here for the, uh, um, to get iPads to, uh, to hospitals and nursing homes. Mm-hmm. That was um, that, that that was a project in which uh, thirty eight clubs I think participated. Am I correct? Thirty eight yeah. or thirty nine? Yeah, right? thirty eight or thirty nine. Yeah, it was it was a lot, and 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 so it you know it goes it goes both ways. Um, you know, clubs that are looking to to get involved, and we try to let you know some resources that are out there, but also clubs that are putting together projects. Um, uh, you know. Uh, make sure you take it, you use your connections with other clubs, you know, reach out to, to Pedro and his committee or myself or our district governor, Chuck, you know, to help get the word out um, so that, that you can, um, you know, invite other clubs, you know, in the district to understand what your project is about. It helps to have a, um, a nice succinct um, summary, um, a nice, um, PowerPoint presentation or, or little video to go with it. But with our, our Zoom technology, it makes it so much easier to, to actually, you know, connect um, with others or, or host a, a session. Um, don't be afraid to host a session. Um, the district, you know, we're, we're happy to set it up for you and, um, you know, get an email sent out on district email or, or something um, to, to invite others to to see what you're um what you're doing so we're, we're here to help um you know help help you connect um you know help, help you reach out so um don't ever you know um hesitate to ask how how we can do that um we know also f- you know from our youth exchange contacts we would have project ideas or not-for-profit organizations um you know many have um relationships with with NGOs that are doing projects or doing a certain type of work and that's one way of of you know connecting to a to a need I would just say that all projects start with community assessments so it always that that's worked on by the two rotary clubs together we don't ever want to be too far along with a with an NGO without having another rotary club uh, involved. It has to be the two rotary clubs, um, you know, working, working with partners. And then there's just a lot out there on, um, social media as well, especially on WhatsApp, uh, around, around projects. So, and then every year there are initiatives that, um, that come out and, uh, this, this year, um, the Hearts of Europe Global Grants um, Project is a three-year program funded by USAID. So uh, the, the project countries are in um, Eastern Europe. Um, you, you see them listed there. And they're getting a double um, World Fund match. Um, again, it's the partnership with USAID. And there's uh, program details you know, for, for those who are interested. So this is being promoted. Um, and... Uh, Yes. Um, and and there, there's some other, you know, requests that, that, that we receive almost every day <laughs> from uh, districts around the world uh, looking for partners. And we'll typically send those to the members of the district grants committee and, and ask them to disseminate it as, as they see um, fit, because we haven't, uh, we, we don't want to inundate um, everybody in, in the whole district with these, but a lot of them are from India. Um, you know, looking, looking for partners. And so, you know, more opportunities to, to build relationships. So any other, any other connecting ideas there? Um, the only one that I can, you want to share, Pedro? Yeah, I, I don't see here is because Chicago has uh, so many great uh, universities and educational institutions. We get a, a, our share of, uh, of uh, the scholars that come to Chicago that are funded by their districts and their clubs, you know, either from Japan or from uh, Australia or from Africa. So the, uh, the, every year we, we get 
some that, that doesn't really cause any any money to the district. Right. All, all they are looking is for a uh, for a false club. And um, it's, uh, it's a great opportunity also to start developing relationships with the, the club that is sponsoring that student. And um, uh, we, we did, uh, or my wife did actually, uh, hosted a, a, a couple from Japan that came, that came to the University of Chicago. Mm -hmm. And uh, all that we had to do was to pick them up at the airport and drive them to the, their accommodations in the in the university and take them out to dinner once or twice. But then the whole club came to visit, you know, the, the, and, uh, and, they, and they were very appreciative and, and very thankful. And uh, that, that's a relation that we, that we have continued to, to foster, you know? So that is, yeah. you, might, you might get a, a request at any time you know, to do something like that. And I know the Oak Park River Forest Club has, has done a lot of that yeah, as well. And th those are really great relationships. And, you know, countries like Japan, they have a lot of district designated funds Ooh. as well. Um, and, uh, you know, we were very fortunate to um, have your relationship with the Tokyo Hero Club. And, and just, you know, just to be clear, uh, they, they donated thirteen thousand dollars of district designated funds to our project. We were we were just amazed. We were hoping to put a $40,000 project together, but with their extremely generous donation and just, you know, the response of our, of our, our clubs, um, we were actually able to put an $84,000 project together. So, um, you know, just think globally and, and think relationships. Um, and those, those scholarships are a great opportunity to be able to to get connected to an entire club, so right. that, that's a great well, example. That's the entire district, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Well, um, we're going to have a couple of closing slides, and then if there's any questions, we'll I be. I don't um, see any any question. No. Okay. If that's anybody has any questions, you know, go ahead and um, put them in the chat, and um, we'll uh, we'll come to that. I just want to remind what we're what we're focusing on this year in our um, just in, in our global grants um, program. Uh, and this again, this is a year where we don't have as much funds as, as we've had in the past. But but yet, we have an amazing um, portfolio of projects uh, that are um, approved and are um, uh, being implemented. And that's part of the reason why we don't have as much funds is. You know, we've, as we've received district designated funds, we've converted them in, into projects and, you know, doing good in the world. So we're really, really focused on the implementation of those projects, making sure they're impactful, um, making sure they're sustainable, and that we're doing a good job on the stewardship uh, of those projects, on time reporting and um, just, you know, following through all the way around. So we actually are having an amazing year in, in terms of, you know, what's, what's happening um, in the world and, and how we're impacting um, people all around the world. We really want to, um, you know, foster this um, collaboration, you know, among uh, our clubs and developing and supporting new grants um, and focusing on community needs. We, we had a, a really nice webinar last Saturday with uh, Rotary Foundation cadre, cadre Wade Namura, who um, talked about community needs. It was it was it was it was a great program. Um, it's on it's it's on the district um, webpage homepage the the link to to the recording. But um, how important that is to you know get into the communities um, and understand you know what what the situation is um, and, and what they really need and involving community members in that process and that's something that we really want to emphasize this year is the importance of that and it's not just to check the box you know in the process of of doing a global grant you know fill out this form but actually you know embracing that process and um, learning as much as possible from it to design 
and put together the best possible project. And then sometimes you might even find out it's not the right project or somebody else is, is um, more appropriate uh, to, to be doing it. So um, it'll help you actually get to, to the root causes of, of what the situation is and, and making sure that the solution is something, you know, that the community feels ownership over and, and ownership is, is the most important word that, that they feel that sense of ownership um, when it's done. And we're, again, we're also focused on maximizing our district grant opportunities to engage in our local communities. Um, we've done a, a good job of that, you know, in all the clubs throughout the district. Uh, we have uh, the district grants are, are well underway, especially with the early childhood education grants and then telling our story. So important to um, tell our, the stories of the projects inside your clubs, um, in, in, into the community, making other Rotarians aware, you know, inspiring others to um, want to do projects, to engage with Rotary, to grow your membership, um, and to grow the giving to the Rotary Foundation. So getting the story out there is really important, and we're here to help you with that as well. So uh, just just let us know um, uh, what, what you need. And then- uh, but, uh, There is a, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so finish, finish, finish this section. Okay. Yeah, and, and so, so of course, you know, we want to be able to continue to do the, the projects in, in the future. So, and, and the way that we're able to um, fund these programs is by giving to the annual fund. So just, you know, re remind, you know, members, project teams, how important it is uh, to, to give to the annual fund so that, you know, we can continue to, um, uh, do good in the world. We think that the best way to invest in a better future is by engaging the Rotary Foundation, you know, engaging and collaborating with each other on, on, on the grant projects and, and by supporting the, um, the annual fund. So, Pedro, back to you. Yeah, there's a question from Roger. Uh, first, a comment says, stewardship of grants requires awareness for the most important points of the uh, in the development of the grant. And then the question is, what are the most important guideposts along the way that we can that we can document to show that we are good stewards other than the required reports? Um, so, uh, so, 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 so for any um, project, you're gonna have a project plan, you're gonna have a schedule, you're gonna have a budget, um, and you're gonna have measurements. So the grant application will lead you to um, having a number of measurements. In, in addition to that, you'll, you should put together some KPI, some key performance indicators, and it, it really depends on the project, but to, to put those together. And so all along the way, um, you know, are, are, are we on time? Are we, um, you know, meeting these performance indicators? So it's, it's really um, probably on a project by project basis, but um, once it's implemented, you know, you really want to pay attention to the measures that you've established um, as well as, you know, some other key indicators for the project. Um, Pedro, any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, I think having, uh, uh, continuous uh, conversations and meetings, especially mm -hmm. if we are the sponsor and we are working with a host club mm -hmm. that uh, it's not, um, that, they have, that they don't have a lot of experience doing, doing grants. Yeah. Uh, I think that a little bit of hand-holding, it's, uh, it's important. And uh, having some communication, continuous communication, you know, and, uh, and, uh, and checking, you know, the points that Rachel just say, you know, the, mm -hmm. are they making progress, but not and, uh, not not leaving it to the to the end to check and grade right. like, like, like an exam, you know, but just more like a continuous like a continuous communication. I think I think that would go was a, a, a long way, you know. You know, no. and, and I I think with the Zoom technology um, that it just makes it so much easier, uh, you know, to set up that monthly meeting have a standing monthly meeting with with the both clubs with the grant teams and any you know key partners that you have on the ground um 
WhatsApp is, is really effective you know, with that as well. Um, some parts of Africa, it, even Zoom is, is difficult. Um, I had that situation last Friday where I was uh, trying to communicate with, with someone and we tried to do, in Nigeria, we tried to do it on Zoom and we just couldn't. And we quickly shifted over to WhatsApp and, and made a lot of progress. Um, but, but set up those, those monthly meetings, be very disciplined about it, but don't, you know, hesitate to, um, you know, have the ad hoc um, conversations as well. And everybody has to be active, you know, both clubs should be active and multiple people um, from, from both clubs. Make sure everyone on the project team has a role, um, you know, has, has some assigned tasks that they're doing, that they're not just there in name. You know, when you look at everything involved in a project, there's plenty of things to do. So, you know, so find a way to divide it up. You know, someone's looking at the finances, someone else is, um, you know, taking the lead on, on some of the planning. Um, there, there's technical issues. Um, I mean, that's often why certain people are on the project teams. You know, they might be the technical liaison. Um, with technology provider, uh, you know, just really make the roles active. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you say the monthly meetings, I think are very important. It's no different than having a construction project. No, it is one. <laughs> it's very simple, it's very, it's, it's the same, you know, so you have to keep an eye on everything is going in sequence, you know, and yeah. keeping an eye on those expenses and, and the receipts because the foundation is very, Picky about that, you know. Yeah, we, was, we, often, we often see when it comes down to reporting time and there's a late report, it's well, it's just one person that has the information and, and uh, you know, and everybody else is in limbo until that person has time to fill the stuff out. And that just isn't the way the projects were, are intended to be run and we have the technology to um, make, make sure that, you know, everyone is, is connected to it. And, and remember to engage um, with the community stakeholders. It's, you know, it's really good to have, you know, a, a team of local community members who are really part of the integral um, project planning and evaluation and, you know, and staying in, in touch with them, with, with those, with those stakeholders, make them because at the end, at the end, you know they're they're taking ownership. It it shouldn't be, you know, seen as so, something that's just you know given to them, or just a gift. But it's something that they've invested in, that they've put their thought in, that they've um, taken the training that you know that they're going to take on and and carry on into the future. And that that's a huge, huge part of the project is is that community ownership. You know, at at the end, that that they see it as um, as um, you know, some something that that they've advocated for, and it it really fits their needs, and they're um, committed to sustaining it. So, um, really focus on that. Any other questions, Pedro? No, I don't see any. There's no more questions. Okay. Well, let me advance. Just remind everyone if you're giving to the foundation that, um, and this is foundation month, November, Rotary Direct is a great way to give. You can um, sign up on myrotary.org and um, uh, just automate your, your payments. And uh, again, um, you know, with any, any questions, um, ideas, you know, reach out to Pedro or, or myself or anybody on our committees. There's an email called grants at rotary6450.net that goes to everybody on the, the grant subcommittee. So that's a good way uh, to reach us uh, as well. And um, there's, there's a photo from uh, the, the Simple Schools um, project, the community assessment team that visited Honduras almost, almost two years ago to you know, determine along with the communities um, what was needed. and. Uh, and they're working hard to um, really make a lasting legacy in those communities. There's gonna be access to uh, education or, or better education for, you know, for, for many young people that just wouldn't have um, 
wouldn't have had it. Girls are gonna you know, be able to continue their educations because water, sanitation, and hygiene are a part of the projects. Many of the girls would stop coming to school. You know, once, once they began their menstruation, they couldn't come. And we're also um, serving some special needs um, children in, in a couple of communities that, that did not have access to education. So we're really, really um, proud of that. I'm going to stop sharing here. And yeah. uh, just back to, to you and I, Pedro, and I'll just, we'll just make a last call for uh, any no, questions. No question. Last call, yes. So you know, we just thank the uh, people for uh, attending the, the training today and uh, just echo what uh, Rachel said that, you know, we are here to help. And, uh, if you have any questions at any time, just please reach out to us. We, we want to spend that money. Absolutely. Um, 